Think of a wonderful thought, any merry little thought. Think of Christmas, think of snow, think of sleigh bells off your coat like reindeer in the sky. You can fly, you can fly, you can fly. Think of the happy. The same as having wings. Take the path that moonbeams make. If the moon is still awake, you'll see him wink his eye. You can fly, 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 you can fly. Up you go with a height and hold to the stars beyond the blue. Dreams come true. Every dream that you dream will come true. When there's a smile in your heart, there's no better place to start. It's a very simple plan. You can do what birdies can. Worth a try. You can fly, you can fly, you can fly. Stack. I'm Ray Goots, and today we're talking about Peter Pan, and I'm here with Rodney Worth. Rodney, how you doing? I'm great. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Good. I'm a little tired. I just uh, got back from L.A. tonight, and I've just been running around since 5 in the morning, but whatever. We are going to talk about Peter Pan, uh, but first let's get some background on you. Rodney, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, three years. Three years? Okay. And what made you decide to get into it? It's just, I, I it's something I always, I always loved stand-up. I was a fan of it my whole life and uh, always wanted to try it. And I went to an open mic once just as a bucket list thing. And it was just like I just got hooked immediately. Okay. And, and uh, you, you, we started, how, where'd you start out at? Or like, did you, like, how many, how long were you in the stand up when you did my, uh, my new, the new talent, Monday Night Good Show? Um, I guess five, six months, I guess. By the time I did your show. Oh, wow, wow, wow. And now what shows do you do regularly? Um, regularly, uh, I do a uh, like, very good comedy show with Eric Grooms and Robert Puncher. Mm. Fairly regularly. Okay, what, what, what club is that show? There are different clubs all over the city. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do that show all over the place. Huh? Mm -hmm. Those guys are racist. Okay, <laughs> cool. So um, tell, me about, tell me a little bit about your childhood, buddy. Uh, it was it was a good childhood, a normal, I guess, upbringing. Um, my dad was a small business owner. My mom stayed home. I was the oldest of five. Um, so my three sisters and my brother were born between the ages of when I was three and eleven, and then my parents split up not too long after that, which maybe that's like part of the reason for my love of Peter Pan because I always felt like very responsible mm -hmm. like for like taking care of the kids yeah you know and like, like Wendy 
like Wendy and yeah. Nana <laughs> and all the lost. I was really thinking more like along like Lost Boys, you know. Okay. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, it was a, it was a normal childhood, I guess. Okay. Now, uh, let's, let me ask you this: uh, What part of cartoons did you did you did you watch? Lockhart with Disney a part of your childhood? Oh yeah, break that down for me. Oh yeah, it was huge. I mean. Cartoons in general were every Saturday morning, mm-hmm. um, and but Disney was huge. Like when I but when I was growing up, you know, like when I was little, like in the seventies, like obviously there was no VHS or DVDs. Yeah. So it's like, but they would release the the movies, you know, every once in a while into the theaters just for a few weeks. Yeah. So and that was that was their uh, that was their their the thing they did before VHS and DVDs and shit. Yeah. Right, right. So that was like how that was like that was huge, you know, going to see them. And then every Sunday was uh, wide uh, wonderful world of Disney mm-hmm. Sunday night on Channel Seven, and you know we watched that like every week, and um, but they 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 would like have like when I was a kid. See, like I remember, well that's where I first saw Peter Pan when I was probably like four. Okay, yes, yeah, so let's get into that. Yeah. Uh you saw you just admitted you saw Peter Pan as a kid. Mm-hmm. So what did you think of it as a kid? I I that I was like obsessed with it. And when I first saw it, it was it was like a huge part of my childhood. Mm-hmm. Um you, I like I guess like the way like little girls like would like latch on to like the princesses in that. Yes. Like I latched on to Peter Pan. I remember when I saw it on uh Channel 7, I was probably about Four, maybe five, and I remember like my parents had gone out, and I was and my grandmother was watching me, and my sister was like two, and my brother was an infant, so they put Rodney in front of the TV so they'll be quiet. And as soon as it was over, I remember going and cutting a pair of pajamas into like shreds, really? so it would yeah, so it would look like Peter Pan, and I grabbed oh, so you, I just thought you hated yeah. pajamas, you know. <laughs> no, no, it was like to be like Peter Pan, oh, and okay. I covered myself and the living room in baby powder mm-hmm. and was like throwing myself off the stairs. The baby powder would have been the pixie dust. I could still oh. hear my grandmother screaming. I guess she was changing the baby's diaper. And then, what are you doing? And I'm like f- trying to fly off the stairs. <laughs> See, that's why you need, you know, I, I visited my Mexican family. They have no two-story houses. So you could be throwing yourself off stairs <laughs> yeah. there. I think I even grabbed my sister, like, think happy thoughts and chucked her onto the couch or something. Think happy thoughts and shut your mouth. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, now that you, uh, are an adult, you just rewatched Peter Pan with me, mm-hmm. while I was barely conscious, uh, <laughs> what did you think of it now? How does it, yeah, it was a great up? movie. Yeah? You it really, so. yeah, okay. I still, it was a great movie. I don't mm-hmm. know what the appeal to me was as a kid, because, like, watching it now, it's like, you know, he was an asshole. <laughs> oh, he's a complete <laughs> he's asshole. Peter, complete Peter asshole. Peter Pan's a complete but asshole. I, I, so's I, Tinkerbell. Yeah. So is everyone on on the on, on Neverland? Yeah, they're all just complete fucking assholes. Yeah, I, which I, is what I I think Michael Jackson when he was raping kids wanted to <laughs> capture the spirit of being a jerk off because he called it Neverland. Yeah. So I mean, if he didn't rape the kids, would it really be okay? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> never grow up, kid. Just bend over. I know, but it would you know because like you know, pe- well he, here here's the weird thing I think about the movie is that uh, why why is Captain Hook just hanging around Neverland? Why are all the him why is he obsessed with children? Fifty year old men, like, but there's what are they looking for in Neverland? And they're like trying to get the kids to join the crew. Why would you want a bunch of kids? Why would you not go show up at like you know the Pirates of the Caribbean, for example? Yeah, maybe, exactly. Maybe it's just, maybe this is part of the Pirates of the Caribbean cinematic universe. Maybe. Why would you not go find a bunch of other pirates and be like, let's be. Let's you guys join our crew, and then you know they could really get some real treasure. Or the Indians. Or the Indians. Or the cannibals in Cannibal Cove. But instead, they want these little kids, and they're gonna like make the kids get eaten by alligators. If they're, he's very into kids, Captain Hook. <laughs> that may have something to do with the fact with the guy that wrote the story. Well, yeah. So there's was, all this dark stuff behind. There's a lot of weird stuff. But yeah. hold on, before we get into you know, I, I I think everyone here listening knows the story of Peter Pan. Uh, this is about a kid who never grew up. He lives in Neverland, and right before Wendy's about to get her first period, uh, <laughs> Peter Pan shows up to be like, "Never, never grow old." And uh, I don't know how that works out, but um, Pete, Walt Disney really wanted to make this movie. I mean, if you remember Pinocchio, which was the second uh, animated film he did, right? At the beginning, 
And it's a very cocky. I, now I look back, it's very cocky because he only had one successful movie. But at the beginning of the movie, um, Jiminy Cricket it, it, it opens a book to tell you the story of Pinocchio. Right next to Pinocchio are Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan. Okay. So he already had it. I am making these fucking movies. You can go fuck yourself. And it took him years to make it because you know they lost a lot of money during during World War Two. He had to take out a loan to finish this film, but this was definitely a passion project of his, and he had to go through a lot of bullshit. He had to compete with Fleischer Studios, yeah, just to get the rights. To this. He he, I think it took him like four or five years to more to, than that to and, get the rights. Well, yeah, but all but to make the movie also. I mean, like Pinocchio comes out in like 1939. I can't remember. It was like 1939. Mm-hmm. I'm really great at this. Uh 1940 <laughs> and this came out like 1953. So this was this was a labor of love for for the guy, yeah. you know? I mean, I mean it, he had to, I mean if the Nazis won, this movie wouldn't have been made. And let me tell you something. I think this movie is a good case to why the Nazis should have won. Anyway, <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, why do you think he was so? He really wanted to make. Well, it that bad? I do know that when he was a kid, mm-hmm. he played Peter Pan in a play. Okay, and like his brother had tied a rope uh, around under his costume, and was so he could fly around the stage and that. So maybe it was just you know a lifelong thing with him. Yeah, because I think at the time when he would as a kid, I guess it would have still been a fairly. New play. It was and probably book. like the Harry Potter of its Yeah, time. exactly. Or, well, exactly. More of a book than a play. Yeah, maybe it was like his Harry Potter and because yet you're I mean, I have heard like what you said, like the you know, that he wanted to make this movie, that this movie was gonna get made one way or another. Yeah, he was like, I'm I'm not fucking around. I'll kick your ass. That's what he told me. Um <laughs> So so uh what 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 parts of this movie do you think hold up really well? What parts hold up? Well, I mean, it, it's insanely racist. This movie, so I mean, yeah, I mean, it it, that really part racist. does not. So that you does know, not hold. I mean, for now, you know, I mean, like a lot of times when, when SJW when the social justice warriors get yeah. upset about an older film, right. like get over it. But this was already in the fifties, mm-hmm. and they are really just shitting on Indian people. Yeah, and we were kind of already like. Hey, we really should have shit on Indian people. I think by the 30s, the 40s, yeah. most people were like, "We need to get over this." And this movie is just like, no, they are. Tiger Lily is hot. The rest of them are just savages. So you gotta <laughs> let everyone know that just they're just a bunch of mongrels that deserve to be mocked and they're, made fun of. They basically it's, just say "ug." Yeah, it really. <laughs> like when I, I'm like, you know, uh, it's the equivalent of I don't know. I I don't know what it would be right now because you can't make fun of anybody at this point, but. They really went for it. They didn't hold back. Maybe it has to do with Walt Disney's childhood. I mean, he grew up when the Indians in... raped his family. <laughs> well, maybe he's got. I mean, if he grew up in Missouri, mm-hmm. in, the, in like the, I guess he would have been born in the late eighteen hundreds. I guess or early, or, very early. Now, so are the Indians a big part of the of the original book? Like, are the, is that part of it where they should? I don't been? think so. No, it's not. I mean, I guess Tiger Lily would have been. I think in the original book, in the original play, I think it, it's mostly just fighting with the pirates. I yeah, mean, I know it was like much darker. That it was like like uh, like in the original plays, and that Peter Pan had no problem just like killing the pirates. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were like a lot of deaths and things like. I think they had to, and I read something once where the original play did not have pixie dust, so kids were like jumping out of windows and stuff trying to fly. Wow. So what was it? Uh, Jim Barry, whatever, J.M. Barry, who wrote it, yeah. he added pixie dust into the story later. Yeah, I don't know why he added that, because, mm. uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, Indians. Nobody likes them. <laughs> Especially in this movie. Um, I'm going to give you my honest opinion on the movie, and then we'll continue, because there's a lot There's a lot to uncover in this film. It's It's... First of all, um, I do like two parts, which I think is very indicative of Disney and uh, all these movies. Mm-hmm. And it's around this time where I decided to switch from a um, from doing this as a stand-up special and to doing this as a podcast. The, fir- the first scene is, all this has happened before, it's going to happen again. And I think that's that, that plays into the, uh, pa- the importance and the power of fables or fairy tales which is what Disney was invested in in the first half, you know, mm-hmm. not counting Melody Time right. and the other abortion, Make My Music. Uh, most of these films are about fables and stories that you want your children to be heard again and again and again. Mm-hmm. 
And the second part that really gets to me, and I think is very, again, it's it's very iconic of what Disney was trying to do, is when the father goes to the window after being, oh, no such thing as Peter Pan, fuck you, you bitch. Yeah. Um, goes to the window and says, uh, you know, this all I've I've seen this before when I was when I was a boy, and it's just it's like you know you experienced these stories as a kid, and then you're gonna pass them on to your kid who will live these adventures, and then they'll pass them on to his kid. You know, and I saw it this right. weekend with uh, my cousin Michael. Uh, he wanted his son to see Lion King, and his son didn't want to see the cartoon Lion King, and he saw the live action Lion King, and now he's walking around with his dog, doing that, <laughs> and he's only five, and that's I think like the power. But between those two, so it's very two very powerful ideas. I think those are two very powerful. It's a very powerful way to start. It's a very powerful way to end. And it gets you right there because you know what Disney's trying to do. You know what this company was built on, which is mm-hmm. the power of stories. The movie, but the rest of the movie isn't very interesting to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the idea is there right. and the concept's there, but I just don't find Peter Pan to be very likable. Uh, I don't find the kids to be that interesting. Um, I, mean, I think my favorite character is Captain Hook, and he's an asshole. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of what well, I just my criticism? I just find the movie well, I mean, kind of grating. I, I <laughs> you you find it grating? Yeah, I don't know. Like the characters are grating. They're not the like, char- all right. Yeah, like especially Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. I yeah. kind of feel like the, listen. The whole problem of the movie is that Tinkerbell just wants to suck Peter Pan's cock, and she can't <laughs> because she's probably small. Well, he's. <laughs> Probably had a small penis, Peter Pants. Why he was always want to be a kid. Well, he was a boy. He was he was a creep. <laughs> um, let me tell you something. I just feel like that. You know, it's like this whole movie. The all the problems are that this fairy wants to bang this little boy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's the weird thing. And it's like I don't know. It just wait, it, there's no like flow to it. There's like we're going on an event, and I get it. They're, they're, they're kids. They go on adventures. It's basically this like playtime come to life. But it's the same time. It's like I don't know. There's something missing. Uh, what, what, what do you think? Well, I mean, I get your point, but I mean, I I just want. I mean, I I still love the movie, mm-hmm. and I just I just don't like think about it too much. Okay. You know, I just like enjoy it. I just you know, it's like just it's like a fantasy. Okay. You know, and you know, I the whole point of like never growing up. I mean. It's like all of us. I mean, you everybody like kind of wants to stay a kid. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, being an adult sucks. Yeah. You know, and it's just it's just the whole fun part of it. I just, you know, yeah. I mean, there's there's definite some twisted undertones in there that I didn't pick up as a kid. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it, you know, and when I see it now, and like when I did, I watched it with my kid. One time, I'm thinking, I was like, well. Everybody knew I loved this as a kid and like fed into it. I got like, well, you know, I had Peter Pan toys and things and books and view masters and all that. I was like, maybe they <laughs> should have like kept this, you know, maybe not let me be so into it. Yeah. yeah Cause yeah, yeah. there was nothing redeeming coming from it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, but to answer what you're saying, like for now, I mean, I, it's just fun. I just, it's just, it was just a fun movie. Yeah, you no. Know, I, okay, no. I'm, 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 see, I think the reason is that you, you, you like it a lot is that, um, and I'm like looking at it from a critical eye, is that I think I only watched it once or twice in my childhood. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't watch it a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think, but even as a kid, it, I didn't really like stay with me. And then watching it as an adult, I like it. I certainly see what Disney's going for, and there's merit. But to me, I don't know. There's just something missing when you compare it to Cinderella. <laughs> Or even Lady in the Tramp. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of like, mm-hmm. like, like just think of like any movie that you like, like, like uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Yes. Okay, like, like I'm sure you love Friday the Thirteenth. I yes. loved Friday the Thirteenth. It's not The Godfather. You no. can't. You can't. Better com- than The Godfather. How <laughs> dare you? It's like you can't compare the two, mm-hmm. but you still you can still love them both. Yeah. You know, and also it's like, I think like I mean I'm I'm older than you. Yeah. And, you know, so, I mean, I'm going to be 50 soon. Mm-hmm. So I'm from I'm from like a generation where like I I mean, although I grew up with Disney, I didn't have access to everything to have. I, there wasn't much of a choice. Yeah. You know, so it's like so if I latched on to like I latched on to Peter Pan, whereas like my sister latched on to Cinderella, mm-hmm. it, it's like it, it just stuck with you. 
you yeah. know? No, like, I hear you. You know, like my... What were some other... Well, I'm sorry, Tinder. What were some of your other favorite movies? as a, uh, Disney movies as a kid. What were some of your other favorite Disney movies? Disney movies as a kid? As a kid, yeah, when you were a kid. I remember... I, well, my first movie ever in the theaters was Robin Hood. Okay. Right? And and I I was like... I was a baby, but I, I was probably like three, I guess. Okay. Because I sort when it first came out, and I remember it clearly vividly and i just loved it Mm -hmm. i think i've only seen the movie two or three times since is it on disney plus i did not check yet okay Uh, the disney plus so far i've been just i've been watching shorts okay yeah that's right you were watching this i was watching shorts yeah i was watching all this yeah yeah, i was watching all the shorts so far um but other disney movies I, i mean pinocchio again i mean it's like these are like i i remember like when they released them when they would re-release them into the theaters Mm -hmm. and like we would we would go, and I guess like whatever movie was out at that time, it would be my favorite movie. Yeah, you know. But I remember seeing Pinocchio. I remember seeing Snow White and Bambi, and like not digging them too much. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, as an adult, you know they're classics. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I remember did like the princess movies, like Cinderella. I did not like obviously because I was like a little boy. But now I could like when I'd watched them with my daughter, it's like a whole you know seeing it like differently than when. I was like a five, six year old boy. Yeah. Because also, like I said, like they weren't, there was, when VHS and stuff did come out mm-hmm. and they started re releasing them, like when they would like open the vault for a little while. Yeah. I was already a teenager. So I couldn't be bothered watching. Well, that's my thing. Like when right. I was a kid, I really wanted to watch Fox and the Hound. There's no way. And then when they finally put it on, which is always weird to me why they did this, because you would think you would want to monetize every property. But Disney in the past, and I wouldn't be surprised if they eventually go back to this on, with Disney Plus. If they've decided they don't want something to be representative of their portfolio, they'll hide the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. And they did that to Fox and the Hound, and I wouldn't be surprised if they wind up doing that with other, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if they if if it didn't play out the way they wanted it to, now Fox and the Hound was like the highest grossing film of all time. Mm-hmm. I mean, then they would have they would have went in that direction, which was a very dark direction, I thought. It's I think it's the angriest movie Disney's ever made. Black Cauldron's another one. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah. And that's a great movie. That's a great movie. But um they they did that back in the day when it was like, listen, um, I like Cinderella and I like and I like Bambi and again you're trying to control the narrative that this is what all these movies were like. You know what I mean? There was mm-hmm. no Make Mind Music, there was no Black Cauldron. But I'm probably still gonna enjoy Fox and the Hound and um Black Cauldron if you give it available to me. But you couldn't. Like all mm-hmm. Oliver and Company didn't come out on VHS. Mm-hmm. So I didn't see it in the theaters. Is Black Cauldron on Disney Plus? Yes. That's gonna it's gonna be it's going to find a whole new level of popularity. Well, I mean, because they I don't buried wanna, that movie. Uh, they buried. Well, that movie almost killed them. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it, but I watched it and I just I couldn't get into it. But maybe when I rewatch, I'm watching it with Jonas Barnes. You know Jonas, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I'm watching it with him, maybe I'll I'll, I'll find uh, I'll, I'll like it more when I'm watching it with someone to talk about. I kind of got lost. I like the villain though. The villain's pretty cool. In black. And the little uh, what's his name, Kirky. Kirky don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about some of the controversy mm-hmm. behind this movie. Okay. Now I forgot to. Uh, I'll admit I forgot to look this up. Um, I completely forgot about this. Last week we we delved into Lewis Carroll being a pedophile. There's mm-hmm. a lot of evidence to suggest that he was in love with Alice and it, things went wrong. And um, Alice in Wonderland was basically him trying to bang. It was him running a story to bang Alice in Wonderland. But now there are a lot of rumors about the author of Peter Pan. There's uh, more than rumors, actually. Well, okay, so everything I'm saying is, like, there's rumors, and, like, the kids... Because one of them lived until they, they were an adults. Uh, what was this guy's name? Because when, when I found out I was definitely going to be doing the Peter Pan with you, mm-hmm. I, Nick, I, Nick, I looked Nicholas some... Nicholas Davis, he lived with them until adulthood, okay. and he said that he ever behaved inappropriately. His quote was, I don't believe that Uncle Jim or experience what one might call a stirring in the undergrowth for anyone, man, woman, or child. And he stated this in the 70s. On another occasion, he wrote, All I can say is that I, who lived with him off and on for more than 20 years, who lived alone with him in his flat for five of those years, never heard one word or saw one glimmer of anything approaching homosexuality or pedophysis, whatever the fuck, uh, one of the fuck kids. Had he either mm-hmm. of these leanings in however slight a symptom, I would have been aware. He was an innocent, which is why he could write Peter Pan. Note that Nico at this time knew homosexuals who he regarded as friends, so his denial of homosexuality was not because he was a homophobe, it's because he's a fucking idiot. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nico also recounted with, with wry humor an incident in which his brother Peter was informed by someone who apparently didn't know who he was that Barry had been homosexual and then abused the Davis boys. 
uh, Robert Bootby, a closeted bisexual who was a friend of Michael Lewis Davis, the, the boy who lived the longest, when they were teens, commented in later years about Michael's possible homosexuality. So Michael might have been a possible homo. Okay. Sexual. So okay. <laughs> I almost got myself <laughs> in trouble there. But although he described Barry's relationship with Michael as morbid and unhealthy, he dismissed the notion that there was anything sex, sex, there was any sexual aspect to it. Um, so what's the evidence you have that he that he boned these boys in the butt? The evidence that I have, well, I found I found it on the internet, so it must be true. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. like there was like well, the movie Finding Neverland that's based on you know the guy that wrote the stories and yes, and like the he was he based this movie on like the three his neighbors three sons or whatever. Mm-hmm. The thing that I found was that. After the three boys, after their mother died, he forged her will so that he could. Oh, so, so that he, right? Was that in the movie or in this real life? This is in real life. Okay. This this was a. Uh, I found this. This was on uh, the internet. Okay. And he forged it so he would become like their guardian, mm-hmm. and there and then like the the three boys. As soon as World War One broke out, two of them immediately like basically ran away from home to join. The army, mm-hmm. and one of them died in the army. Peter died. What? Okay, in World War One. Well, I don't know if he died in World War One, but Peter did die. I mean, well, everyone dies eventually. And but the other two sons committed suicide, yeah. and one of them, one of the one of them had like before he committed suicide, like burned all the letters that uh, J M Barry or whatever mm-hmm. had written him okay. as a child. Okay. So I mean, there's. That's just a little. There's something. There was something very creepy behind the whole thing. There is. And, uh, there's a metaphor. Th- there's. There's a reading of the Peter Pan story that Peter Pan himself is a pedophile. That Peter Pan is basically like a uh, a pedophile pretending to be a kid. And they said that he did not like the Lost Boys when they got older. He would thin the herd. Mm, I've which heard that. Yeah. That he murdered the Lost Boys, and um, you know, I I think he fucked them in the butt till they died. That's what I think happened. <laughs> Um, and I'm sticking by it. That goddamn Peter Pan. Tinkerbell <laughs> was was his. Uh, you know what? I know they call what is it? The beard? When yeah. You're a gay guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I think they should call it uh, Tinkerbell. Um, I know they call gay guys Tinkerbell. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. So I, my my dad used to t- tell me that back in the back in <laughs> back in the enlightened times of the 60s and 70s, they called homosexual men Tinkerbells. Uh, I think they should have called the women who the gay men were using to. Anyway, don't worry about it. Um, another controversy. Uh, and I mentioned this in the Melody Time episode with with Andy, I forget how you say your last name. Um, was Bobby Driscoll, right? Who was Disney's really? He's really the, the, the Hannah Montana before there was a Hannah Montana. Am I right or am I wrong? He was wasn't. I think Bobby Driscoll was the first uh, person that they signed like to a contract to be. I think he was in a. Uh, was it Tom Sawyer? No. Uh, he was in um, a tre- a Treasure Island. Treasure Island. He's also in Melody Time, and he's the voice of Peter Pan. Right. And they based Peter Pan's looks on Bobby Driscoll. Mm-hmm. And he's the first fallen child star, which, you know, mm-hmm. it's so funny because this story has not really been well publicized because uh, Andy brought up to me saying, I think he died horribly, and I looked yeah, it he, up. Yeah, he did. He, di- he was a... Uh, he he died homeless, I think, or it was a, he was a, a, a drug addict, and he he's in a potter's field. Yeah. Oh, something. he's also in Song of the South. Okay. Which I think is the real reason why they're repressing that's probably, that movie. Yeah. He was also in So that's, Dear to My Heart, P- Pecos Bill. Well, that's that's uh, make my music, make my music. Mm. Uh, he was if you only know Susie, the widow, uh, the window, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And at 12, he got a special Academy Award for So Dear to My Heart and The Window for juvenile acting. Huh, I didn't know that. Probably also, you know, best victim for the pedophile ring back mm. then. Um, and this, this episode took a dark turn. Yeah. <laughs> and he, from what, I rem- from what I've heard was, uh, mm-hmm. like, well, Disney, he, well, when he became, a, when he was a teenager, he developed, like, really bad acne. Mm-hmm. And Disney dropped him because they, it was, they couldn't, cover it up with enough makeup or something so they they dropped his contract so now he's a former child star and he has to go into like a regular high school mm-hmm. so now he's for the first time in his life i guess in like a public high school with terrible acne and everybody knows he was peter pan and all these other movies yeah it was difficult and, for yeah. to gain serious film roles because every saw him as disney's kid actor 
And he did some special star-focused television series with big names such as Loretta Young, Laura Swanson, and Shane Wyman. And he also performed the radio show, special broadcasts. Uh, and he was he also won the Milky Way Gold Star Award in 1954. So that's pretty cool. So the last major thing he did was Peter Pan. Wow. Which leads credence to the fact that he was killed with pedophile ring. Um, <laughs> and was cast opposite of Disney's little British woman, child actress Catherine B- Belmont. Uh, Just will not only provide the voice for Peter, but was also a reference model for animators. Peter's facial expressions, mannerisms, and behavior all mimic those of Driscoll. Uh, Walt Disney was known to have held Driscoll in high adoration and essentially saw the young boy as the living version of his youth. According to Driscoll's mother, her son had a great love for Walt Disney. Uh, no homo. And always <laughs> did what the director told him to do. <laughs> However, during a project meeting after the completion of Peter Pan, here we go. Uh, Disney admitted that he now saw Trisco was better suited for the role of a young bully rather than a like a lovable protagonist. They raised his salary to 1750 a week. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. That's pretty good. Um, but he had very little work in 1952 compared to his high pay. And in March 1953, they extended his contract for two more years with Disney, which would have kept him at Disney until 1956, but it was canceled just weeks after the theatrical release of Peter Pan. Here's where it gets dark. Driscoll had hit puberty, which came with a bad case of acne. I think it's supposed to be ac- acne. Yes, you were yeah. the acne. And this is the official reason. Uh, the termination of Driscoll's contract all connections with Disney. And that's him. And the movie came out. Holy crap, he looks just like... Looks like who? Peter Pan. Yeah, he does. But uh, And then... Um, so he went to a regular university, Westwood University High School. His grades dropped. It was off the target of teasing due to his film career. And Driscoll said, the other kids didn't accept me. They treated me as one apart. I tried desperately to be one of the gang. When they rejected me, I fought back, became belligerent and cocky. I was afraid all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so then at 17, he started using drugs. You know? He Who started did? snorting pixie dust. He was snorting. He was, yeah, you, he <laughs> thought he could fly. He was using whatever was possible God. and available, but mostly heroin because he could afford it. Driscoll's mother recalled that her son was always disciplined before the drugs, and that show business is not where he first was exposed to narcotics. Yes, yeah, sure, lady. Well, I mean, look at how bad they fucked him, I mean. Yeah. I mean, holy mind fuck. He was like the original Corey Haim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they, 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 uh, oh, my God. So I he mean, started hanging out with, like, he called them the underdogs, which the bad kids. Yeah. Um, he, got, he went back to the Hollywood Professional School, which is where they had all the young actors, and he graduated in May 1955, and he was arrested for possession of marijuana. Like, who cares? Nah, that's big deal. But he was also using coke, speed, and heroin. Uh, and this is mother. what years? This is like uh, this so. This is like fifty six. Now we're at fifty six. Like around like Reefer Madness, the movie. Yeah, but he was and also. I mean, he was also doing. I didn't even know they had speed in nineteen fifty six. I thought it was like a seventies thing. Mm. Um, her son's drunk, so he traveled to Mexico in December of the same year with his new girlfriend Marilyn Jean Rush, where they two eloped to avoid their parents' objections. They ended up, but they did have a nice formal service in Los Angeles a year later. They had a son and two daughters. Uh, and he was able to gain parts on two television. I feel like this. Is, I feel like everything is. I feel like this is almost Leonardo DiCaprio's character was based on this. Did you mm. see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I did not. Okay, he like went from um, major roles to like doing dopey stuff in TV series. They based it on. Bobby I don't Driscoll? think they based it on. Oh. No, they didn't. But it kind of sounds like the same character. Mm. Um, oh wow! Look, look at him towards the end. Oh my god! Yeah, and he was only it. like thirty-one or thirty-two yeah. when he died. Mm-hmm. And then his mom said, it isn't true. Oh boy, she got paid off well. It isn't true that people in Hollywood didn't want to help him. Oh Cornell Wilde wanted to help him. Michael Caine wanted to help him. Disney Studios made a mistake. They didn't call Bob. and They said they wanted, they, they wanted to talk to him. His marriage unraveled. He separated from Rush. He was arrested shortly after disturbing the peace. An assault with a deadly weapon. They were hitting two men with a pistol who were heckling him while he was watching a girlfriend's cars. The charge later dropped. Driscoll and his wife were unable to amend their relationship and got divorced in 1960. You know, and here goes comes the decade of, of free love. This is uh, all. Wait, now Peter Pan came out in nineteen fifty three. So in seven years, mm-hmm. he spiraled from an Oscar to getting arrested, washing cars. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And then we get to eight years later. We're in sixty one. He was charged with assault, robbery, narcotics possession, and forging checks. He was sentenced as a drug addict to the National to the Narcotics Rehabilitation Center of the California Institution in Chino, California. He was released in 1962. He was unable to find any work. He tried to live a normal life as a salesman, but it didn't last. And his mom had this to say. Drugs changed him. He didn't bathe. His teeth got loose. Uh, The narcotics affected his brain. And there you can see he looks like a real truant. 
Good lord. God, Captain Hook won that time. <laughs> um, so, 1965, he left, a year after his parole expired, he left everyone, everything, and really crazy New York with the hopes of redoing his career on stage. Uh, he called his parents every once in a while, because this is where it gets dark. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. He disappeared. His mm-hmm. mother called his son, her son's attorney in California and asked where he was, but his attorney didn't know either. She decided to let well enough alone in case her son was back on drugs and didn't want to be found. That's nice. You know, you got to let her yeah. son do drugs. Mama dear. She figured he would contact her when he wanted, you know, when he needed more speed. Driscoll had abandoned his dreams of redemption and became part of Andy Warhol's Greenwich Village art community known as The Factory. Driscoll began exploring his other artistic talents. Which one? Which you've said these has no talents. <laughs> But he started making collages and paintings. Some of his pieces were considered brilliant, not standing by Warhol in the art community. Brilliant uh, by people on LSD, maybe, or yeah. something, right? I, never, I mean, I wish there was a, a picture of one of these or something. Mm. He had Driscoll gave one last performance in an underground film by experimental filmmaker, I don't know. Uh, Driscoll was Baroque, and he left the factory in 1968, disappearing in the Manhattan's underground. So here's where, you know... Oh, you ready for this, Rodney? Okay. So pretty sad so far. What happened to Peter Pan? It's terrible. Really Disney fucked them. It's their fault. Yeah. yeah for, just for acne. Look what all happens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. On March 30th, 19... This is showbiz. Two boys playing in an abandoned East Village tenement. Right now, nothing's abandoned. Found Triscoll dead in one of the rooms. He was lying alone on a cot with nothing but two beer bottles nearby and scattered religious pamphlets. The medical examiner determined that Triscoll died from a heart attack Caused by advanced hardening of the arteries due to his long-time drug abuse liver disease. At like 31. Yeah. Oh, my God. He had no identification when he was found. And went to a, he was buried in a potter's field. That I know. Yes, the potter's field. He was 31 years old. Uh, about 19 months after his death, Disco's father became deathly ill. That's to see his son. as was deteriorating fast. They tried to put uh, Merv Griffin, they asked. Uh, Disney Studios had his fingerprints on file. What? <laughs> Why does he need his fingerprints? This was the, they found the body, and uh, and then after his son, after Cleus Driscoll, his father learned about his son's death. He died, um, and his the son's name was on the father's tombstone. There's only an empty casket buried with him. So dark. His body still remains on heart silent, unmarked. The public didn't learn of Driscoll's unfortunate death until the re-release of Song of the South in 1972. Oh my god! So, so they held they kept it secret for years. And because like did, didn't the mother go to Disney? Yeah, and they it was, so the they found because Disney's fingerprints. So Disney were like, oh, "Okay, Peter Pan is buried in a potter's field. But don't tell anybody because we're planning on re-releasing a movie with him." Oh man! Oh man! Um, I think that I think it's a horror movie. Where uh, the bot, where I, th- I I sense a horror film where someone goes to Hearts Island, and Bobby Driscoll comes back from the dead, as an evil Peter Pan <laughs> to kill all the kids on Halloween night. <laughs> Hocus Pocus two. <laughs> That's the plot I want to go with. They re- the the, the uh, Bobby Driscoll. So there's a lot follow of dark the leader, shit. motherfucker. There's a lot of dark <laughs> shit uh, with Peter Pan. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of dark shit with the idea of General not growing up because. Eventually, it becomes weird. Not growing up. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, because we we do grow up, and it's and I and I'm seeing this as a man surrounded by toys right now, doing a podcast about <laughs> Disney films. But uh, we all eventually have to grow up, and I think that, you know there's just a lot of dark stuff about this movie. Uh, but it is a classic. It's one of Disney's most successful films, and it made a great mark on your life, did it not? It, it was a huge, huge part of my life. Now, so. um, Rodney, I know you have daughters. I have one daughter. Okay, okay, that's kind of... What happened to your second daughter? I only have one. You only have one? <laughs> yeah. uh, so I was in California, and I thought my friend had a kid, and I uh-huh. didn't see him in a while. He's a comedian, so I was at his house. He's yelling and screaming in his apartment. He's drinking, and I'm like, are we going to... He goes, you want another beer? I go, yeah, but shouldn't we go out and we're going to wake the baby? He goes, I don't have a baby. <laughs> and I'm like, what? So you're imagining extra kids for people. I think I think someone's going back in time and erasing all your children. That's what I think. I think you dun, erased dun, dun. Your, your youngest daughter. Uh, he just wiped her from the timeline. Peter Pan. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. Um, <laughs> would you show this movie to a young child now, like a five-year-old? I would. Yeah? I would. You think it would hey, hold I think, up? Yeah, it's, yeah it, it's harmless. I, I mean, it's like, it's racist. I mean, I, I it's guess racist it's racist, but, but it's... But is it really racist? I mean, Indian people don't have rights. It's, it's, you know, I, I mean, it's like, you know, when you, you look at it now, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's like some of the stuff they're saying is... It's horrible, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, it's like 
it's like little. It, you got to look at it, I guess, as like like the Lost Boys. Little kids were just asking stupid questions. Yeah, they weren't trying to be racist. They were ignorant. Yes, they, yes. it was ignorance. It wasn't racism. Well, uh, was Captain just, Hook was definitely trying to be racist and a pedophile. Well, okay. he was. Yeah, there was some there was definite pedophile. Smeagol got his stomach out, like showing off his body. I don't know. <laughs> It's weird. It's weird, I tell you. Okay, Rodney. Um, are there any? Uh, so this is probably going to come out in a month. Is there any shows like in, let's say, January you want to promote or February? Um, January tenth, I am going to be at Broadway Comedy Club. Woo! At seven o'clock on Carlos Garcia's uh, greatest comedy show of all time. Yeah. So you know, it's already going to be good. It's the greatest comedy <laughs> show of all time. Yeah. And then anything else? And then uh, what about social media? Where can people find you on social media? I am only on Facebook because I'm old. Okay. I am old. Okay. You know, don't, old people don't do the Instagram and all that stuff. So it's just Rodney Worth. It's just Rodney Worth. On Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Well, Rodney, thank you so much for being on the D- Disney Movie Stack. We we did Peter Pan, and we're, we're going to continue. I was thrilled. I think my whole life was building up to I think being on this, this podcast with the one and only Ray Goots. Yeah, and I think we had a really good talk about Peter Pan and, and everything that comes with it, all the darkness. Next week, uh, no more no more, no more more anal rape because we're going right <laughs> to Lady and the Tramp. Oh, that's my wife's favorite. Oh, I love that that's movie. A, that's that's, a my, that's the first one we ever had on VHS, and I'm yep. looking forward to this episode. I'm going to yeah. do it with Cisco from LOL Comedy Club. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Um, he said he w- he said to hold it for him. I'm going to text him. He better fucking do it. He looks like my he looks like my cousin, Renee. Yeah. Um, it was a, it's a great movie. I I didn't I only saw it as an adult. I never saw it as a kid. Oh, I, that was one of that was one of my favorites. It was a great a movie. And now that I have dogs, it takes on a whole new meaning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so thank you so much for joining Ronnie. Um, thank you for listening to Disney Movie Stack. You can follow oh. us on Instagram and Twitter at Disney Movie Stack. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Ray Goots. Have a good night. Take